I plan to create a low-budget ecosystem in a jar. It will be fresh water for snails and shrimp. I will use this jar that I had at home. I took the substrate and decorations from the park near my house. I was lucky to find this soil. Yes, it is soil from mole hills. Moles prefer loose, moist, loamy soils rich in organic matter. Moles have cleared the soil of worms and other predators. This method is inspired by the Wallstad method, which Diana Wallstad explains scientifically in her book, Ecology of the Planted Aquarium. I covered the soil with gravel, which acts as a barrier between the fertile soil and the water column. This way, the fertile soil will not spread everywhere in the water and the organic nutrients will be used by the plants through their roots. This substrate will also be home to beneficial bacteria which together with the plants will act as a natural filter for this ecosystem. I will use some stones that I found around my house. The larger stone is a piece of volcanic rock. I am not talented at aquascaping and my hand does not fit very well in the jar, so I will not insist on arranging the stones. Because it seemed to me that something was missing, I thought of adding some pieces of wood. So I returned to nature. I don't know what kind of tree these pieces of wood are from, but they are dry. To prevent them from floating, some people glue them to stones with superglue. I'm not a fan of superglue, so I chose this option. You usually get this plastic basket when you buy aquarium plants. Although this is the first project using the Wallstad method that I am doing in a jar, I really like how it looks. Using this Wallstad method, I created an ecosystem that is two years old and still looks great. I made a complete tutorial that can be accessed by all members of this YouTube channel. To avoid disturbing the gravel, I first placed a plastic bag in the jar and poured water into it. Then I placed the jar next to the window. As you can see, I haven't planted it yet. Although I like how it looks without plants, the Wallstad method requires planting. But I delayed planting to see if everything is okay and if there are any predators. The water has turned whitish in color. This is an essential process for stabilizing a healthy aquatic ecosystem, transforming toxic substances into less harmful forms. Faster than I expected, the water became clear. The soil used looks free of pests. Now I can set up the aquarium and populate it with snails and shrimp. But first, I tried to clean the biofilm that had formed on the surface of the water. This is a delicacy for shrimp, but it slows down the exchange of gases between the water and the air. I started the planting process with Eleocaris parvola. It is a grass plant, and if it grows, it will contribute to the aesthetics of this ecosystem. If it does not grow, I have planted another grass-type plant, Micranthemum Monte Carlo. From my experience in growing aquarium plants without fertilization, this one grows nicely, but it takes a long time to settle in after planting. I also planted Bacopa caroliniana. And this red plant is Rotala rotundifolia. 
It is one of the few red plants that grows very well without the addition of fertilizers. For shrimp, I will add a piece of Christmas moss. I added two ram's horn snails and ten red cherry shrimp. I have finished setting up this ecosystem. Now, I will have to monitor its evolution. Two weeks have passed, and this is what the ecosystem looks like now. I have noticed an explosion of these small planktonic crustaceans. Although I didn't intend to do so, I created a culture of Daphnia. They feed on decaying matter, bacteria, and this fungus that is found in abundance on wood. As long as their food source is abundant, they will continue to reproduce. Over the next few days, I completely ignored this ecosystem. Every few days, I would just check to see if any of the shrimp had died. I didn't see any dead shrimp, so I told myself that everything was fine. I didn't feed them or change the water. I actually noticed that they started molting. And the number of water fleas is increasing. It was only when I wanted to film that limpet up close that I saw the algae. For this reason, I will reduce the lighting time from 9 hours a day to 6 hours. For lighting, I used what I had at home, a desk lamp, and the energy-saving bulb is a 3-watt warm white. I also noticed a species of snail that I didn't want in this ecosystem. But the fact that it is here confirms that it is an invasive species. It would be a good time to feed the shrimp. I think they are hungry. I will give them these special granules and some spirulina. Only after half an hour did a shrimp approach the piece of spirulina, but it quickly swam away. The shrimp don't seem interested in the food I gave them. Curious. And this snail passed by the food and ignored it completely. And this snail or that snail, they don't care about the food I gave them. Shrimp prefer to feed on natural food sources, along with small invertebrates and organic matter. The color of the shrimp is intense, which means that they are eating better quality food than what I tried to give them. Many people are cautious about ecosystems that do not use a filter. However, as you can see, it is easy to make one without any issues. It is also cost-effective. An ecosystem of this kind can be an interesting project to undertake and an intriguing corner of nature that you can have in your home. My conclusion at the end of this project I like the fact that the soil taken from the molehill does not contain predators. But it is possible that in a few months I will see some beneficial worms in the substrate. And if they don't appear, it's not really good. It seemed to me that the water parameters stabilized relatively quickly, in just seven days. I could have spent a lot of money on a piece of wood from the store, but it still wouldn't have brought me as many benefits as the pieces of wood I took from nature. I expect this ecosystem to last for several years. What do you think?